Welcome on Electrical to Subject. On today's video, it's gonna be a, an introduction to this subject. My name is uh, Joey Mande, and I will be your teacher during this semester for this subject. And on today's video, we are just going to discuss about two points. Introduction to AC source because you're coming from um, a DC source, so you need to understand how do we generate AC source. Two, we are going to do an introduction to AC circuit. When it comes to an introduction to AC source, we have to have a look on how is this AC source generate. Because when you talk about AC source, we see an alternative current. So therefore, in order for us to generate this alternative current, because if you look on the screen, what you observe is that you have a wave which is not fixed, but you have a variation of this wave. So it's an alternative current, a variation in current or voltage. If you ask yourself how this current is generated, we're gonna need to have a magnum. What do we need to have a magnum? Because we know that with magnum we're gonna have a formation of two poles, north pole and south pole. You have your north pole and then you have your south pole. So you know that with a those pole there will be flux that will be moving always from the north pole to the south pole. So these flux are magnetic flux. Okay? So the first thing that we need, we need a magnetic flux. The second thing, we need a conductor. So you come with a conductor, you put it in the magnetic field. Therefore, now we can say we need to have a magnetic field and then we need to have a conductor. And the, the things that we need in order for us to generate a AC source, we need to have motion. And that motion is a circular motion. So we use any kind of source in order for us to, and to have that mechanical force. So with that mechanical force, we are going to rotate this conductor in a circular motion so that this conductor is going to cut the flux. Okay, so when this motor, this conductor starts rotating in that magnetic field, it's going to cut the flux. By the time it's cutting the flux, we are going to induce a EMF. So if you come with a conductor and with a voltmeter, you connect it across that conductor, you are going to measure a specific voltage. Okay, so to recall, in order for us to generate a AC source, we need a magnetic field, we need a conductor, and we need motion. And that motion needs to be a circular motion. So when we are rotating that conductor in a magnetic flux, this conductor is going to cut the flux. When it's cutting the flux, there will be an induced EMF into our conductor. So if you come with a voltmeter you can measure the inducer voltage okay so since it's a rotation voltage uh, okay we are cutting the flux not to measure that voltage okay so therefore we're gonna have a voltage measure across in, according to time okay because when you look here i have a voltage et which is the voltage measure across the time according to time and that voltage is an instantaneous voltage Okay, so with this instantaneous voltage, what happens is, first of all, we're going to have a peak or maximum volt, volt, uh, value of this voltage, okay, because since this voltage is a rotational voltage, it's still going to reach a specific point, which we call a peak voltage, okay, as you can see, here we have our peak voltage, peak voltage on the negative side and the positive side and the negative side so we're gonna need to know what is the peak of this voltage okay and then on the tech we gonna need since we say it is sine wave okay we're gonna have a circular motion and that circular motion we call it to be a 
angular frequency because it's an angular frequency in a circular motion because this conductor is rotating in a circular motion okay in a circular motion because it starts from zero degree until 360 degrees so we have a full cycle and then we're gonna have a period at which this conductor is going to repeat itself to into our flux can you see there is a repetition because we have a repetition of that circular motion now we have our angular frequency so and the angular frequency okay is going to be given by um, as you can see here you have 0 90 180 60 so we are rotating this conductor in a circular motion so this voltage can the maximum or a peak voltage can be measured at a specific angle can you see so this angle is the angle at which we measure the peak voltage like in this case as you can see the peak voltage it measure after 90 degrees can you see and therefore we're gonna have maybe for instance a 90 degrees there 90 degrees it mean we reach a peak voltage by the time we reach the 90 degree of that conductor in a circular motion okay so therefore as we said we have our angular frequency we have our angular frequency this is our angular frequency which we explain that mathematically angular frequency is that rotational uh, motion so we we interpret it by saying 2 pi why 2 pi because we are rotating in a 360 degree circular motion and then there will be a period a period is given from the period you can get a frequency at which this motion is repeating itself okay so we look here you have a frequency okay it's given one over the period and therefore the interpretation or our AC source is always given and this equation okay so this equation is the same as that equation and this equation you'll be you seeing it most of the time when you're doing electrical too so it's all about your peak or maximum value of at which you may you 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 your, your, your conductor reach and then since it is sine wave okay you want to have an angular frequency which we say is given by 2 pi the frequency so that is your angular frequency and then this angle that's going to be in your equation is going to be the angle at which you reach the maximum voltage okay or your peak voltage okay so that's how this will be the equation of a ac source okay so from the symbol now since we know how we generate our ac source let's have a look on the symbol the symbol and notation so our symbol this will be the symbol of our ac source and as you can see it's all about a sine wave a sine wave okay so we explain where do we get this expression okay and the two they're the same because what changes does that here we have the angular frequency but the angular frequency is given by two pi the frequency okay and this equation is called a an instantaneous value of the voltage okay but we cannot do our calculation in this form we need to change it to a rms value but we, we know that the peak voltage is equal to the square root of two of the rms value so that we are going to change this to a rms value in order for us to do a calculation so one thing you should note that electrical 2 is all about complex number so all the calculation we'll be doing is going to be in complex number so i will try to make a special video even over the phone just to explain you how to use calculator in complex mode so in complex mode you have two form you have a polar form where you have a magnitude and the angle and then you have a rectangular form so you should be used to this type of uh, um, calculation in complex mode but electrical too it's all about um, it's all about uh, complex number 
but mostly we're gonna be using this polar form so you should be used to that okay so how do we change our experience value to a rms value how do we change this guy to a rms value so look at here as we see we know the peak is given by square root of the rms therefore the rms value of our experience value is going to be the peak voltage the peak voltage the peak or the maximum voltage okay we substitute it there divide by square root of two plus or minus of our voltage uh, maximum angle at which we measure that maximum voltage okay so that's how we change it to rms value in order for us to a calculation and everything should always be in a complex form which complex form this form so every time you're going to be doing calculation your current or voltage must be in complex mode in complex form and then this is also applied for the current so let's do some example when it comes to this instantaneous values of the voltage how do we change to rms you should be used to it now so let's say for instance they give us this voltage which is the representation of our AC source we want to change it to rms value you come here you take your peak or maximum value you divide it by square root of two and the angle is going to be this is where our maximum angle the angle at which we reach that peak voltage then you substitute it there you take even with the angle can you see and then after this will be our rms value of the voltage check example two as i said it's also applicable for the current but now when you look at here they give us a an angle in radiant but one thing we know that we know that pi is equivalent to 180 degrees so therefore we take our peak volt value of the current we divide it by square root of two and then we change our pi to 180 divided by two and therefore our um uh, rms value of the current is going to be five at the angle of 90. so there will be some trick that may happen along the way because you are an engineer so we need to test your knowledge okay and the trick that will always happen is to you is that remember we say that our ac source is a sine wave source it's always going to be a sine wave always a sine wave okay so let's say you are in the case when they give you a cos wave so you need to change it first of all to a sine wave how do we change it just add an angle of 90 degrees so the the maximum angle it was minus 15 with the cos uh, wave but the cos wave is the wrong wave but to make it become the right sine wave is called uh, a wave is going to be a sine wave so you add 90 degrees to it therefore you're going to have an angle of plus 75 when it's come to a sine wave okay but a quick way to do it is when they give you a cos wave to change it to a, to a sine wave you just take as we say you take the maximum or the peak value divided by square root of two and therefore you take that cos wave angle you substitute it but you add an angle of 90 degrees but make sure you put it under the bracket the way i do it so that you won't make any mistake and it's a positive angle there so that is the trick that may always come back to you and you should take note of this introduction to ac circuit when you talk about circuit we see the three electrical components which is a resistor it's given in ohm you have your inductor which the unit is angry okay but we want to do our calculation in ohm everything should be in ohm so we're gonna change this inductor to an inductance and how do we change it we're gonna take the angular frequency times the value of the inductor and then the angular frequency is given by 2 pi times uh, um, the frequency so the two are similar but it depends when they give you the angular frequency you can calculate it already or if they give you the frequency you can use this to calculate so that you have an value 
the idea is to change n root to a um value. So you have a capacitor which is always given in Farad that the symbol and therefore we're gonna change a capacitor to a capacitance. Why? Because we want to make sure that we change Farad unit to a ohm value. Okay, so this will be our equation. Okay, but since sometimes they can only give you the frequency, we can use uh, this formula so that the angular frequency is given by 2 pi uh, the frequency. And this formula for the angular frequency, you should be used to it because I put it in red, so you should also write it uh, down, which, which is equal to 2 pi uh, the frequency. So that's it. Okay. Those are the three components. But we are going to have a look on how does these three co electrical components behave in our AC source, which is a alternative current. Electrical component in AC source, AC circuit. Then we start with a pure resistor. Pure resistor, what do we mean by pure resistor? Okay. Let's say, for instance, we're in the circuit when you have a resistor and an inductor. Okay? But if our calculation is only focused on the resistor, we ignore everything in the circuit. Our calculation is based only to the resistor. Only the resistor. That resistor becomes a pure resistor. Okay? So let's say, for instance, we come here, we close the switch. Okay? By the time we close the switch, there will be an alternative current that will be flow. Okay? So one thing we'll observe is that the reading of our ammeter and the reading of the voltmeter is going to be simultaneous because our resistor, by definition, it goes against the flow of the current, but the current still flowing through it. So when you close the switch, the reading of the ammeter and for the voltmeter is going to be instantaneous. So the two are said to be in phase, you see. So the blue wave is going to be for the current, the red is going to be for the voltage. So the two, they are flowing at the same uh, speed, okay? The reading is going to be instantaneous. So this is state as to say the voltage and the current are in phase. The voltage and the current are in phase. What do we mean by that? It means if we are we have a given VR voltage at angle of 10, okay? We will expect the current across that resistance to be at the same angle, same angle. In phase, it means they're going to have, they're going to be, they're going to reach their maximum value at the same angle. Can you see? Voltage across the, the resistance is 10. The current across the resistance is 10 as well, okay? So therefore, if you come, you apply your ohm's law. What is your ohm's law from electrical one? You apply your triangle. Okay? So you know that you're going to have V, I, the resistor. So you're looking for this resistor. So it's going to be the voltage divided by the current. So you take any magnitude, that for instance, we substitute one and then one there. Okay? So when you do calculation in complex mode, you create later, you are going to have. A specific voltage but it's a specific uh, uh, answer which is going to be for instance one at the angle of zero what does that mean it means every time you're dealing with a pure resistance make sure that when you, ap you you apply your ohm's law the voltage drop across the resistance and the current across the resistance you must have a resistance at the angle of zero so that's what it's called to be a pure resistance a pure resistance always has an angle of zero degree And you should note that down. Pure inductor. What do we mean by pure inductor? When we are doing calculation in the circuit and we are only focused on our inductor. Okay? So from electrical one, if you remember very well, it was all about the inductor, it was all about a storage of current. You could do a calculation of what? Charge current, DK current and store energy of that current. Can you see that? It's all about the current. So it's like our small battery of current. And then with a battery, 
when you close the switch if it's low bat you don't have any charge in it if you close the switch what happened is that zero after the time after the time then you're going to charge a specific percentage can you see that because it's the storage of current what does that mean it mean so i'm gonna use the blue color for the for the um uh, for the current so if you start the current is at zero by the time you close the switch is at minimum okay but what happened to the voltage if the current is at minimum the voltage will be already at maximum can you see that if the current reach maximum the voltage is also at zero can you see that so that when the current is coming at the beginning is at minimum after t time when we are when we are charging it okay the voltage drop is decreasing by the time we reach the maximum the voltage is at minimum okay and the state it said that the current legs the voltage okay so our current legs the voltage to leg the voltage what does that mean it means it's coming behind it's a delay okay it's leg it's coming behind the voltage for instance if our voltage is at angle of zero we expect a current that will be legging it coming behind it so this current will be my instance at the angle of minus 90 because it's coming behind it it's following it okay when the voltage reach 90 degrees the current is at zero degrees can you see that so that's what happened when we say the current leg the voltage and then if you apply your arms low okay you come here you just substitute one one you want to have a value of xl which gonna be one at the angle of 90 degrees okay but what does that mean it means with a pure inductor pure inductor i will expect it to always be at the angle of 90 degrees so every time i do my calculation even if i have a circuit something like this if i'm focused only on the inductor i would expect that pure inductor to be at the angle of 90 degrees so you should write it down first of all you say a pure resistor is at the angle of zero degrees now we say a pure inductor is at the angle of 90 degrees pure capacitor and again when you talk about pure capacitor is when we are doing calculation focusing only on the capacitor and if you remember very well with the capacitor it was all about what it was all about a storage of voltage decay voltage charge voltage energy store in that voltage which means it's like a battery of voltage Okay, so therefore, if we close a switch here, I will expect to have a voltage at zero. And then after the time, I'm going to reach a specific uh, percentage. Like we said, with your, um, telephone, your phone, if your phone is at zero, it's low, but when you plug it, you know, it's going to move already at 100%. You need some time for it to be full. Okay, so this is storage, it's the battery of uh, voltage. So what does that mean? It means our voltage, which I use, I use in red, it's at minimum when we our, that alternative current start flowing. After the time, we reach the maximum. So what happened to the current? The current is that from the beginning, we read the current is at maximum. By the time the voltage reaches the maximum, the current is at minimum. How do we call it? We call it to be the current legs the voltage the current lead the voltage sorry the current lead the voltage the current lead the voltage the current is coming before the voltage so if the voltage is at the angle of zero i will expect the current that will be leading it at the angle of 90 it's coming before it so by the time the voltage reach 90 degrees the current is already at 180 degrees okay and if you apply your arms low with this concept what you observe is that if you come we take the voltage drop across uh, the capacitor and then the current you do your complex calculation here you're gonna get a value of xc at the angle of 
uh, nine, minus 90 degrees so what does that mean it means every time you are dealing with a pure uh, capacitor you will expect it to be always at angle of minus 90 okay so what are the three most important parts that we said it's all about a pure resistance always at angle of what at zero pure capacitor at the angle of minus 90 pure inductive always at angle of 90 so if you understand this concept of pure inductor now in the next video we are going to explain you how to calculate the total impedance when you are doing combination of those three electrical components